We're now going to work with some symbols. So a symbol is a reusable asset you can use for special effects, animation, interactivity. There's three types of symbols, graphic, button, and movie clip. For our project this time, we're going to use a movie clip. Now that doesn't mean it's necessarily animated because in our case, on this one, it's not. So this is where you should be at this point. We just did the text. So now on the stage, select only the coffee cup. So with your selection tool, click on the coffee cup. We're going to click modify, convert to symbol. And we are going to call that coffee mug. And we are going to choose movie clip from the type. So yours may be graphic or I don't know what yours is, but select movie clip. And leave everything like it is. And then we're going to click OK. So now if you go up here to your library panel, you can see that we have a coffee cup that's in the library panel. So now we are going to do some other things. So select the coffee cup layer. And we're going to drag this coffee mug, the, the symbol, from the panel to the stage. So click right up here. And we're going to drag it right over here to the stage, just to the left of the other one. Then we're going to right click. And we're going to select Arrange. And we're going to Send to Back. Send it back. And now it's behind that other cup. We're now going to use the free transform uh, tool. So I'm going to click, I'm going to right click, go to transform, free transform. Now hold down the shift key. That way it'll constrain its proportions. And we're going to make that one smaller than the, the other one. I'm going to move it up to where it's a little bit behind that other one. So now use, click on the selection tool. Make sure that that mug is selected. And then over here in the properties panel, you're going to click underneath color effects. We're going to change the brightness and we're going to move that to about minus 20 and you can see that it's affected the brightness of that then we're going to go back to the library panel and double click on that coffee cup and that's going to put it in its own little place here I'm going to zoom in so I can see this a little better. Double click on that cup and you can see that it's changed it to where, where we can edit it. If you look up here, you can see that we have our working copy and then you can see we have scene one, we have coffee cup, mug, and we have group. So let's now click on the Let's click to deselect it. Double click just the outline to where it selects the outline. And then go over here to the properties panel. And let's change the stroke size to like, uh, let's say, three. Make it a little bit bigger. You can see that we've got a little bit thicker outline around our cup now. Now click scene one on the edit bar above and it takes it back to there and you can see that they're linked together so both coffee cups now have a stroke that was a little bit bigger than it was before. And so next thing we're going to do using the selection tool double click the large coffee cup mug. So double click that mug. And you can see then everything else on the stage is dimmed. And we're now into what's called symbol editing mode. 
notice that the, on the edit bar above that it no longer says that we're in scene one, but we're in the coffee mug. That's where we are. So double click on that cup to edit it. So now all the everything inside there is editable. So if you wanted to change like the color of the the stroke and you could change the size of it you can make any types of changes that you want uh, whatever you see fit make it narrower you may change its color you could add a handle uh, I'm not gonna make a handle but if you wanted to you could put a handle on your cup then after you make whatever changes that you make to it which is completely up to you click scene one on the edit bar above and that takes you to the main timeline or you could just double click on the stage outside the graphic and that takes you to back to where you were so now we're going to do what's called breaking apart a symbol instance if you no longer want an object to be a symbol instance like we had here we can use a break apart to return it to its original form so use the selection tool to select one of the coffee cups cups on the stage it doesn't matter which one go up here to modify and then break apart. Then choose modify and break apart again. When you do that, it breaks animate breaks apart the group into its individual components, which are the shapes. So you could do that, and at that point you could make changes to the, all those things. So it's just showing you how you can do that. So now click edit and then undo these break aparts because we're going to take it back to where it was, however many times you did that. So now we're going to select the smaller cup and we're going to show you how to apply a blur filter so in the properties panel so you've selected that go up here to the property panel and then expand the filter section so and you can see that there are no filters added right now uh, click the plus sign to add a filter and we're going to select blur and you can see here you could change it we're gonna mine is four and four I'm just gonna leave it there that's and you can see that this cup has got a little bit of blur to it so leave it or you can change it as long as your cup has some type of blur to it all right so now we're gonna convert and export our art so we've completed our composition we've got a simple illustration we've got some text boxes we've got these cups they're blurred we've done all of these things to them and so now select the selection tool if any of your layers are locked unlock them select the wavy go to the coffee aroma area so and select those lines as well as one of the the cups I'm holding down the shift key and so then go up here to modify and convert to bitmap and when you do that you can see that uh, that cup and those layers are now converted to a bitmap image that may be something that we'll, we'll do use that later I want you to now click edit and then undo convert to bitmap now to show you how to export this we're going to click file and then export you can I'm going to show you a couple different things you can export the image and at that point you could make it uh, a JPEG any type of uh, picture that you want it to do you can do that but in this instance the way what you're going to export that you're going to submit to be graded as a SVG, which is a common format for uh, using this. So I want you to click File, Export, and go to Export Image Legacy. From there, we're going to change this to a SVG image. And then I want you to click Save. From there, you're going to get this box with some options. Just click OK. One thing I didn't do when I exported mine, I didn't look to see that I exported it to the right place. So when you when you click Export Legacy, make sure that you put it 
in your Animate 2020 Lesson 2 file because I did mine and then all of a sudden I couldn't find it because I didn't pay attention. So don't be like me. Make sure that you've put in the right thing. So you can see I've got 02 working copy with my initials and it's a SVG document, which is what you're going to submit. Last thing I'm going to show you is on this project is how you can save your your favorite assets available to you anywhere. You can use CC libraries to create and share your graphics, including colors, brushes, symbols, and even your entire document. So I want you to click Window and then select CC libraries. And that opens this panel. And from there, you can click, uh, choose Create New Library. So you would choose that, you could name it whatever you wanted, and then do, once you do that, you've got some, I'm not going to finish, I'm not going to do that, I just want you to be aware that you can do that, and to share the library, you would just open your panel menu and choose collaborate or share link, and that would share what you've done, and you'd be able to access it from there. Alright, so this completes Animate Lesson 2.